What are some of the creepiest declassified documents made available to the public? Toy Box Killer Transcript Dude and his wife kidnapped young girls for his sex dungeon and played this tape for them when they woke up, detailing what he was going to do to them, including torture, raped by his dog, and how he doesn't get caught by brainwashing them to forget. The few lines of the transcript, Hello there, bitch. Are you comfortable right now? I doubt it. Wrists and ankles chained. Gagged. Probably blindfolded. You are disoriented and scared, too, I would imagine. Perfectly normal, under the circumstances. For a little while, at least, you need to get your shit together and listen to this tape. It is very relevant to your situation. I'm going to tell you, in detail, why you have been kidnapped, what's going to happen to you and how long you'll be here. I don't know the details of your capture, because this tape is being created July 23, 1993 as a general advisory tape for future female captives. The information I'm going to give you is based on my experience dealing with captives over a period of several years. If, at a future date, there are any major changes in our procedures, the tape will be upgraded. Now, you are obviously here against your will, totally helpless, don't know where you're at, don't know what's gonna happen to you. You're very scared or very pissed off. I'm sure that you've already tried to get your wrists and ankles loose, and no you can't. Now you're just waiting to see what's gonna happen next. You probably think you're gonna be raped and you're fucking sure right about that. Our primary interest is in what you've got between your legs. You'll be raped thoroughly and repeatedly, in every hole you've got. Because, basically, you've been snatched and brought here for us to train and use as a sex slave. Sound kind of far out? Well, I suppose it is to the uninitiated, but we do it all the time. It's gonna take a lot of adjustment on your part, and you're not gonna like it a duckin' bit. But I don't give a big rat's ass about that. It's not like you're gonna have any choice about the matter. You've been taken by force, and you're going to be kept and used by force. What all this amounts to is that you're gonna be kept naked and chained up like an animal, to be used and abused any time we want to, any way that we want to. And you might as well start getting used to it, because you're gonna be kept here and used until such time as we get tired of ducking around with you. Sweden had a compulsory sterilization program running from 1935 to 1979. It was state-sanctioned and given without consent, sometimes without the people knowing they were being sterilized. The three main reasons for these sterilizations were Health concerns for the mother Eugenic, not wanting to pass on mental illnesses or any form of handicap Social, antisocial people, criminals, drunks etc. In other words anyone who didn't conform properly and was considered unfit to raise children. Jeffrey Dahmer's Full Confession, A Couple of Hundred Pages of Pure Madness. Necrophilia, Dismemberment, Skinning, Lobotomy, Body Part Preservation, Cannibalism. Dahmer became pretty close to his interrogating detectives, Dennis Murphy and Patrick Kennedy, and provided a lot of detail to them. A lot of it in a pretty candid, offhand manner. It's incredibly hard to find Dahmer's confession online without it being behind a paywall. The first 63 pages are mainly forms and letters, the real meat of the confession starts afterwards. Mr. Dahmer further stated he would cut off the penis and body parts, and put them in formaldehyde to preserve them and then look at them and then masturbate for gratification. He drilled holes in people's heads and poured acid and boiling water into them to try to make them into sex zombies. The CIA was working on a heart attack gun back in the 1960s-70s. It started off as a conspiracy theory but gained enough momentum nationwide that it forced the US government's hand and they finally admitted the theory was mostly accurate. Short version, they never had a fully functional heart attack gun, but they did have a nearly working prototype. The idea was that it would have a very small projectile that would be laced with a chemical that would induce a heart attack and leave a hole smaller than one left behind by a syringe. While they never had a fully working version, they did have a prototype but abandoned the project once they more or less had to admit the conspiracy was mostly true. Definitely the Jonestown death tape. That shit proves to be a solid way to lose all chances of sleep. So, here's some context. Jim Jones started a cult called the People's Temple, yes, without the apostrophe, and eventually they moved to a new settlement they built in Guyana called Jonestown, named after their leader. Since he made them believe he was some form of the messiah, as a lot of cult leaders did, he could control them all to do whatever he pleases, and one of the things they did was practice drinking flavor aid, not Kool-Aid as commonly believed, 
to prepare themselves for the time when they commit revolutionary suicide. These practices were just normal flavor aid, Kool Aid, but Jones told them it was poison just to see their reactions. When the time came, someone recorded what was, essentially, the sounds of people drinking flavor aid laced with cyanide, alongside a fatal cocktail of other substances, many victims including young children, which you could hear screaming in the audio. 900 or so people died, only a few didn't. This was the biggest loss of American life in a deliberate act until 9-11, and there is an audio recording of it. And just a very strong reminder, this wasn't mass suicide, this was mass murder. Many people were willing to die at his hands, but all the children and some of the adults didn't. Since all of them were forced to take the drink, it wasn't their own choice to drink it, it was Jones's. So, whilst people believe that it was a suicide, they were all duped into being murdered by Jim Jones. Operation Northwoods Basically, the U.S. government was going to carry out attacks its own people, as well as other military targets, and blame it on the Cuban government, so that the U.S. would have a justified reason for going to war with Cuba. The plan involved blowing up U.S. ships and even inciting acts of terrorism on the streets of America, killing civilians. It was backed by the DoD and Joint Chiefs of Staff. Thankfully, John Kennedy vetoed the idea. According to Adam Walensky, JFK's speechwriter and friend at the time, JFK left the meeting and said, and we call ourselves the human race. A man named Joseph McMonagall claimed he had the unusual talent known as remote viewing where he had the ability to see the world through another person's eyes at any physical place, and any place in time. The CIA ran a test on him in 1984 where they tried to discredit his ability. They gave him a piece of paper with coordinates and a date and time written on it, and told him to tell them what he saw. The catch was the coordinates were on Mars and the date was a million years in the past. However, to their surprise when McMonagall began to describe what he saw he described unfamiliar landscape, and said that he viewed a civilization in dire state. He then went on to describe complex infrastructure spanning the strange landscape, such as roads, aqueducts, channels and pyramids. He described the entities that he saw as, tall shadowed figures, and it appeared that their situation was critical, and on the brink of apocalypse. The CIA declassified the entire transcript which can be read by anyone online. Soviet Union's Cannibal Island In the 1930s, the Soviet government decided to send thousands of undesirables to a swampy river island called Nazino with nothing to survive on but bags of flour. People tried mixing the flour with river water and this resulted in outbreaks of dysentery. Eventually people started eating corpses and later on killing other people for food. There was no leaving the island, since the guards would shoot you if you tried. Eventually the settlement was dissolved and the 2800 plus survivors were sent to smaller settlements upstream. All of this was kept secret by the government until 1988 when the Glasnost policy was introduced and the details were made public. Not so much creepy but rather pretty freaking cool in a 50 sci-fi B-movie kind of way. Project 1794 top secret program with the U.S. Air Force working with a Canadian aeronautics company to build a supersonic flying saucer-like aircraft that would be able to simultaneously wage psychological war on our Cold War enemies as well as physical war, it was also designed to be a bomber. The project was scrapped when they figured out that not only would it be too expensive to build enormous flying disks, but also that crafts of that shape were near impossible to fly at supersonic speed. MKUltra was pretty ducked up. CIA created mind control program that tried a bunch of different things to control behavior in people. Paid people to be LSD test subjects by picking them off street and paying them in cocaine just to leave for them dead after, among other stuff. Unabomber was a test subject and it ducked him up and lead to him killing people. Also the author of One Flight Over the Cuckoo's Nest was a test subject. In the 1940s a Swedish group of scientists gave mentally ill patients candy to see the effects it would have on their teeth. What makes it especially bad is that these experiments were performed on people who were uneducatable who had no say in what went on and needless to say their teeth were beyond repair. Once again in the 1940-50s the US government in an attempt to study the effects radiation had on newborns and pregnant women, gave doses of radiation to newborns and pregnant women. In one study, Researchers gave pregnant women doses of iodine-131. When they inevitably miscarried, they studied the women's aborted embryos in an attempt to discover at what stage, and to what extent, radioactive iodine crosses the placental barrier. 
the Senate Intelligence Committee report on torture. The CIA had force-fed some prisoners orally and or anally in order to establish total control over the detainee. The committee found that at least five CIA detainees were subjected to rectal rehydration or rectal feeding without documented medical necessity. At least one prisoner was diagnosed with chronic hemorrhoids, an anal fissure and symptomatic rectal prolapse, symptoms normally associated with a violent rape. CIA officials Scott Miller and James Pavitt were told that rectal exams of at least two prisoners had been conducted with excessive force. Threats were made to rape and murder children and or family members of prisoners. In November 2002 the CIA killed at least one prisoner during interrogation by hypothermia. No CIA employees were disciplined as a result of his death. At least four prisoners with injuries to their legs, two with broken feet, one with a sprained ankle and one with an amputated leg, were forced to stand on their injuries. Prisoners were told that they would be killed. For example, one prisoner was told we can never let the world know what I have done to you, another was told that the only way he would be allowed to leave the prison would be in a coffin. One CIA interrogator who was subsequently sent home early threatened a prisoner with a gun and power drill and played Russian roulette with him. At least two prisoners were victims of mock executions. Several prisoners almost died and became completely unresponsive or nearly drowned during waterboarding. Abu Zubaydah's eye was so badly damaged during his time in prison that it was surgically removed. Prisoners were kept awake for over one week, 180 hours, causing at least five to experience disturbing hallucinations. One prisoner was psychologically traumatized to the point of being a broken man but CIA operatives stopped short of completely breaking him. Prisoners were forced to use buckets for toilets. As punishment, the waste bucket could be removed from a prisoner's cell, 